Hello friends, it's uh, mid-April. Actually, we're about to roll into the month of May and here in the Memphis area, that's called uh, the month-long celebration uh, that's called Memphis in May. We have the music festival that takes place. We have uh, the World Championship Barbecue Cooking Contest, which is just outstanding if you're ever in that area and smell all the barbecue smoke taking place, but it's inevitable. Somebody is going to say, it's just hard to believe how fast things are going. Can you believe it's already April? Can you believe that it's already the month of May? Christmas will be here before we know it. And it is interesting to us. We make those statements, but yet at the same time, we shouldn't be surprised because we do know that things continue to progress. Things continue to move at a unique pace. And sometimes life does go by at a very hectic pace. Your head starts spinning because of all the endless activities that's got to take place. We've got to get to a soccer practice or a baseball game, or we've got to get the girls to dance classes, or I've got a meeting or a gathering. And after a period of time, you just kind of want to say, it's time to stop. It's time to rest. I need a respite or I need a place to just chill for a bit. It's at times like these that we just want to sit down and relax and just stop. For some, it's taking a vacation or maybe even nowadays a staycation to where you just want to be at home in your own space. You want your own little place of refuge. Um, some may want to go to the mountains and just sit next to a mountain stream. I'd sign up for that any day. Some like to go to the beach and put the toes in the sand and just listen to the waves crash against the shoreline. My wife, she would sign up for that as well. But do you ever feel like getting away for a break? And I'm sure you do, that you just want to go to one of those places and be still and be quiet. Well, there is where you can find peace, and that's why you want to go. That's why you want to do those things. And today, people call those getaways, we call them retreats or weekenders or just a quick little scoot out of town. Just this past weekend, Mary and I had had kind of that moment to where the weather was pretty. It was time to get out. And I said, where do you want to go? And she goes, I don't know. Let's just get in the car and go. I think that means we're officially old people. But we did that thing. We just got in the car, ended up driving north of the Memphis area. We found a, a park, a state park here in the area and stopped over by the Mississippi River. And she said, you know, I don't think I've ever been up at this spot. And it's less than 40 minutes from the house. It became, if you will, a little getaway, a refuge for us to be a part of. But a refuge is also a place of safety to someone that finds themselves in a time of trouble. That refuge can provide peace and protection from anyone who would want to harm them. And where we find ourselves in the study of the book of Joshua right now is in chapter 20. We've got four chapters left to go. And at the beginning of chapter 20, after the land had been distributed uh, to all the tribes, God appointed a place of refuge in the midst of all this for the land of Israel. See, over the past few weeks, we saw how God divided the land amongst the seven tribes. If you recall, all 12 tribes had now received their portion. The Levites' inheritance, or the tribe of Aaron, was that of the Lord. In chapter 20, God appointed six cities of refuge in the land of Israel. In chapter 21, we're going to read that God makes these six cities, or these Levitical cities, the priestly cities, along with 42 others that are set apart as a city of refuge. The Levites were in fact given 48 cities and their surrounding pasture lands for all their flocks. Now that Israel had received their land, some of it was designated for this very special purpose. The six cities of refuge were, become, were to become an important part of Israel's culture. As I said in last week's sessions, it was, if you will, very similar to what we call the local church today. It was their place. It was appointed. In Joshua chapter 20, if you'll take your copy of God's Word with me, and you can read along if you like, but just the two first two verses in Joshua chapter 20, verses 1 and 2, it says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, verse 2, Say to the people of Israel, Appoint the cities of refuge of which I spoke to you through Moses. See, he reminded them yet again that God spoke to them through Moses about a number of things and a number of occasions. And here they were this area of refuge or this area of uh, safety was first mentioned in Exodus 21 at the giving of the new law. Kind of a paraphrasing, if you will, in Exodus chapter 21 verses 12 through 13, it talks about the one that strikes a man so that he dies surely should not be put to death. 
talking about an unintentional murder or an involuntary manslaughter is what it would be called today. It says, however, if he didn't lie in wait, but let God deliver him into his hand, and then I will appoint a place for you where they may flee, where they may go, a place of refuge. See, God himself appointed these cities within this promised land or the nation of Israel. They were to be an integral part of the justice system. The cities belonged to the Levites who were also involved in the communities of justice. See, God values human life and requires that justice be maintained, yet at the same time, some mercy to be exhibited. Not only were the lands appointed, but we're going to read on Sunday as you make your way here to the campus um, here in the Midtown area, we're going to see that not only were the lands appointed, but they were also accessible. When we read down in this short chapter of Joshua chapter 20, around verses 7 and 8, it says that they appointed the lands there in the area. And if you remember, we talked about the different uh, tribes last week. There was some land appointed in Kadesh and Nephali and Shechem and in the mountains of Ephraim. There was also some in what we know today as Hebron and in the mountains of Judah. And they were on both sides of the Jordan, by Jericho to the east, and then also in the wilderness plains there in Reuben and Ramoth and Gilead. And again, you can read all of this about where these were done. So the placement of it was all throughout the land. The six cities of refuge were distributed through the land of Israel. There were three that were appointed by Moses on the east side of the Jordan River. And Moses commanded Joshua to set aside three more on the west side of the Jordan. These cities were evenly spread out amongst the land and amongst the inhabitants. Everyone had access to a city of refuge. They were, as I've already said, on both sides of the Jordan, but there were also some to the north and to the south. And Israel kept the roads that led to these cities in fairly good condition. They also had a clear signpost along the way, and this was to enable the manslayer or the one that was accused of something easy access to these places. The journey must not be too long, lest the one that was accused of the bloodshed should be overtaken by him along the way. It was a place for them to go. Think of it today in our modern day cities, in our urban metropolises. We see um, there's this organization called Safe Place, and they have these yellow signs that are placed at community centers or civic centers or uh, what we would call um, centers like a YMCA or a gym or in our community, the Croc Center, and even some churches. And the sign simply denotes a safe place. And they're located all over. I remember working for a previous organization where we went through what was called safe place training and how to bring in those individuals and hear their initial story, do their initial intake, and then as a result, if needed, provide them a place of refuge. That's in essence what was being done here. These places of refuge was set up for everyone. Matter of fact, in Joshua chapter 20, I believe it's in verse 9 at the end of the chapters, at the end of the chapter, it says that these cities were appointed for all the children of Israel and for the stranger who dwelt among them, that whoever killed or acted towards a person accidentally might be able to flee there and not die at the hand of someone else. Verse 9 says that it was available to all. And this included the strangers, the inhabitants, and anyone that was seeking a place of refuge. There was to be no favoritism. God cared for all people and wanted all to receive mercy and justice. Today, that would be all are innocent until proven guilty. All had access to the cities of refuge. But friends, how does this relate to us today? Sure, we think maybe of refuge in a different way for me needing to get away. As I said, in the mountain springs or the sands of a beautiful white beach. Do we need a place of refuge? Yes, we do. But if we look at it on the spiritual level, we have all broken God's law. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, we are all guilty. I mean, we're reminded of that by Paul's writing to the church at Rome where it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then later it says, for the wages of sin is death. Friends, there is a place of refuge for all of us. That was when God appointed the cross as the place where the sin was atoned for. We just celebrated this coming through the Easter season, and we were recalling the words that was recorded in the Gospel of John, and it says, And if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. That was Christ saying, All people are welcome to come to me, and I will draw them to me. 
Again, as I've already mentioned, the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Rome, when he wrote the letter to the church at Colossae in Colossians chapter 2, it says, And you being dead in your, trans- in your trespasses, or the uncircumcised of your flesh, a paraphrasing was, He's made alive together with Him, having forgiven all of those who have trespassed in all their sins and wiped out all the handwriting of requirements that were against us. And He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it, to the cross. We are all in need of refuge and we have the opportunity to flee to a part of refuge when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. Friends, Christ nailed the charges against us to His cross. The cross is the place where God judged sin. So therefore, it's accessible to all of us. Everyone has access to the cross of Christ. In fact, all are invited to come. Jesus Christ has made the cross a place of refuge where all sinners can flee. The unknown author of the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 6, I think it was in verses 17, 18, maybe 19, again, a paraphrase and wrote, So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise of the unchangeable character of His purpose, He guaranteed it with an oath. He guaranteed it with an oath in which it was impossible for God to lie for all who fled for, some translations say, refuge or safe haven might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope that is set before us. We all have a place to refuge, to run towards, to be a part of. And so when we think of this narrative, when we look at the writings of the book of Joshua, and we find ourselves in Joshua chapter 20 and 21, and in your copy of God's Word, the heading of this area is called Cities of Refuge or Cities of Protection. Our mindset is... We all need a break. But the reality is we all need a Savior. We all need a refuge in knowing that someone has forgiven us. Someone has provided a place for us for protection from all of those things. Just as Moses was doing in the Old Testament. Honoring God's call to put place a place of refuge for those that were involved in some sort of crime that was accidental, okay, or involuntary in the sense that they needed protection until proven guilty. So these were those cities of refuge. And he left the responsibility and the guidance of those cities to the Levitical tribe or the Levitical priest. Hence, and our understanding today, left it to the responsibility of the church. So I look forward to unpacking this a little bit more on this coming Sunday here on the campus. If you're able to join us, I'd love for you to be a part of our activities and our gathering on Sunday mornings at 1045 a.m. If you're unable to gather for us, we will have an audio version of the sermon available for you uh, as early as Monday or Tuesday of the following week after the Sunday morning service. But for now, if you're looking for a place of refuge, if you're looking for a place to where you could be accepted and and loved on and shown mercy and grace. Let me encourage you to find a local church. Let me encourage you to find one of those, if you will, those places of refuge that are all over our city that are looking to take you in and to share with you the gospel story and the love of Christ. If you don't know of a place, you're always welcome to reach out to us here at Union Avenue and we'd be more than glad to sit down with you and talk to you about what it means to seek out refuge in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Will you join with me as we pray? Heavenly Father, God, we love you. Lord, we thank you that we can find comfort and peace and refuge in you. Lord, we love to be able to open your word and to look at what was written in the Old Testament and apply it to that in the New Testament and be able to see that the love that you exhibited on the cross was also in putting forth a place of comfort and care and respite for us. It was our refuge. It's why we sing the songs, You Are Our Refuge and Our Strength. So Lord, as we gather together on this coming Sunday, Lord, whatever brings us in this place, I pray that we would be able to put the busyness of the week and the hecticness of the week aside and that we would focus in on You as the one that gives us rest and peace and joy in the moment and ultimately gives us hope. So Lord, we thank You that we can take Your Word, that we can open it, that we can read it together, that we can learn from it, and that we can go from this time and this place and apply it. For it's in your precious holy name we do pray, and amen.